Hi everyone and welcome back to my take on it with your angelic karma. It is Saturday, August 17th and we are live once again. Those of you that want to join me on the chat, you're most definitely welcome to do so. This is to the men here. I was seeking this and I came across the eight types of energy, the eight types of intelligence. I was seeking the eight types of love. They're all wrapped up in one another and they all correspond with the five senses of knowledge. A question this we're gonna go over this first but the podcast the question is in the podcast the remaining of the podcast is going to be about what type of lover are you yes we're talking about intimacy but sexual intimacy today more specifically and I'm gonna give you something to sit back and think about regarding yourself and regarding hookup culture and whether or not it takes you away from yourself especially if you look at yourself as a good lover now we're going to be talking about technique and passion regarding that but let's go ahead and get started with this and this is from some food for thought now the ancient greeks in their pursuit of wisdom and self-understanding found seven different varieties of love that we all experience at some point when we understand the different types of love out there we can become conscious of how deep our connection is with ourselves and the other people in our lives. And remember, because you are men of visual that I'm speaking to, and your dating pool is of visual women, it will be most definitely all of this information about love. Everything about it is connected to the five senses of knowledge. So some very interesting, intelligent, analytical topics we're going to be speaking of, but they're most definitely all romantic. Now let's get into this. Eight different types of love. What different types of love are you currently experiencing and how are they impacting your life? Now, number one, this is what the first type of love, eros or erotic love. The first kind of love is eros, which is named after the Greek god of love and fertility. Eros represents the idea of sexual passion and desire. First type of love, and that's what we're going to go in today with today's topic that's what all of this is leading up to. The ancient Greeks considered Eros to be dangerous and frightening as it involves a loss of control through the primal impulse of the primal impulse to procreate. Eros is a passionate and intense form of love that arouses romantic and sexual feelings. Now, this first type of love, it corresponds with man's primal nature to procreate um impulse passion what drives you at a subconscious level but this isn't the subconscious level we're speaking about this is the primal nature remember because the five the the, the five um it the five senses of intelligence it all goes with the senses also eros the the eight Types of love all correspond to the senses also, all very intelligent, all being very, very analytical, all being very logical energy. But this is the passion part of it, what that driving desire that man was created with. Eros is an isolated and beautifully idealistic love that in the hearts of the spiritually awakened can be used to recall knowledge of beauty. Okay. All of this corresponds with men being visual and you all's dating pool of women that are visual, naturally visual also. As Socrates puts it, through tantra and spiritual sex now. But when misguided, edels can be misused, abused, and indulged in leading to impulsive acts and broken hearts. Now, okay, let's continue. Eros is a primal and powerful fire that burns out quickly. It needs its flame to be fanned through one of the deeper forms of love below as it is centered around the selfish aspects of love. That is personal infatuation and physical pleasure. Now, this is what it's stating. Because man has that burning desire built in to procreate that primal nature of um, sexual desire, sexuality, and wanting that 
here and wanting it now, it could take man away from his, his self mastery. Now, it doesn't mean that Edel should be away and not in the equation. And that means that you shouldn't put physical pleasure first and physical pleasure isn't important. It doesn't, it didn't say that. It means it needs to be combined with one of the other seven types of love below. Because remember, you all are visual men. You're attracting your equal, a visual woman. Now, so let's see what it needs to be combined with. One of these, not all of these. Two. One of the other types of love. Philia or affectionate love. The second type of love is philia or friendship. The ancient Greeks valued philia far above adults because it was considered a love between equals. Now, remember, adults needs to be combined with one of these loves. Because men are naturally connected to the five senses of knowledge, sight, that's why you're visual, hearing, being able to listen, and that's the communication part also, touch, feeling is the affectionate part. So men are connected to the five senses of knowledge. Now, and you're, uh, you're most definitely connected to the eros energy. We women that are visual, we get you because we get you, meaning we understand you. We know where you're coming from because we're physically attracted to your body. Now, I have Mars, Mercury, Venus, and Scorpio. Other women that are visual, they're physically attracted to men, to you. So they have eros. There's isn't a burning desire to procreate, but there uh, is the burning desire of your dating pool and who you want to co-create with that physical desire who wants you but the love needs to be combined adults the passion the flame physical attraction being physical visual excuse me need to be uh, connected with one of these loves here affectionate love the second type of love is philia 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 or friendship the ancient greeks valued philia far above adults because it was considered a love between equals Plato felt that physical attraction was not a necessary part of love. Hence the use of the word platonic to mean without physical attraction. That's platonic love. That's a friendship. Like if you, your friends that you have, your guy friends, your friend girls that you're not physically attracted to. Philia is a type of love that we have for our friend. Okay. Okay. You know, that's why Eros combined with philia makes a romantic relationship why because eros is the physical attraction of men physically attracted and that di driving desire so eros has to be connected to philia because philia by itself won't make a love relationship and eros by itself isn't um it's just about passion and the sex now so philia is a type of love that is felt among friends who've endured hard times together as Aristotle put it, philia is a dispassionate, virtuous love that is free from the intensity of sexual attraction. It often involves the feelings of loyalty amongst friends, camaraderie amongst teammates, and the sense of sacrifice for your pack. Example of films, Girl with a Pearl Earring, I love that book. The Girl Next Door, and the love catalyst of philia is the mind, meaning an intellectual love, a mind-based love, but with no, it's what you will have with friends. It will be like a friend like that and no romantic connection. So philia by itself doesn't make a love relationship. Philia combined with Edels makes a love relationship. Now, Edels here. Now, number three, the type of love. Remember, Edels is combined with this. Storage love or familiar love. Although storage closely, closely resembles philia in that it is a love without physical attraction, storage is primarily used to do with kinship and familiarity. Storage is a natural form of affection that often flows between parents and their children. And children for their parents. So this won't combine with edels. Edels combines with the um, philia. Storage love can even be found among, among childhood friends that is later sh shared as adults. But although storage is a powerful form of love, it can, uh, it can also become an obstacle on our spiritual paths, especially when our family or friends don't align with or support our journey. 
The love catalyst for storage love is memories. Okay. The next number four here is we have Ludus. Ludus, a playful love. Although Ludus is a bit of it of the erotic, it has has a bit of the erotic edos in it. It is much more than that. The Greeks thought of Ludus as a playful form of love, for example, the affection between young lovers. Ludus is that feeling we have when we go through the early stages of falling in love with someone, the fluttering heart, flirting, teasing, and feelings of euphoria. That is Ludus. That is what we can associate with the honeymoon phase of romantic relationships. Playfulness in love is an essential ingredient that is often lost in long-term relationships. Yet playfulness is one of the secrets to keep the childlike innocence of your love alive, interesting, and exciting. The love catalyst for Ludus is astral emotion. Now, Eros and Ludus in a long-term relationship with the philia is the making of a perfect, quotation, romantic relationship. The foundation is perfect. That's why it's about the combining of this love with Eros. Visual men, men and visual women, they're always going to have a passion because they have a physical desire, physical attraction to the partner. That's why the Greek gods knew how sexy they were. They physically, they knew that it need to, that that desire need to be combined with the other aspects of love to make the perfect relationships with those that are visual and that are connected with the five senses of knowledge. This is deep. Now, number five, mania or obsessive love. I have more. <laughs> so this isn't it. <laughs> and sometimes it can be dubbed as obsessive. You know, <laughs> not, not, not me. Okay. Mania or obsessive love. Mania love is a type of love that leads a partner into a type of madness and obsessiveness. It occurs when there is an imbalance between Eros and Ludus. Now, remember Eros, the physical burning desire that man comes in wanting to, um, to like procreate and sexual physical attraction. Remember, Ludus is the emotion, and Scorpio is the most the depths of emotion and feelings. So when there's an imbalance, because remember, adults needs to be combined with this. This isn't a, this. You all are visual. We're talking about your dating pool. Women that are visual. This isn't about the visual and the physical isn't important. You all are visual. You want the fulfillment. This is about the balance of the five senses of knowledge and the eight types of love. And the adults being very important to you all that are visual. Your your feminine counterparts because their visual is very important to them also. Edos isn't going anywhere, but the balance of Edos and 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 um it says the balance of Ludus. Now when that's out of balance, it can create the mania or the obsessive love. I felt that it should be Edos and Philia, but it's Edos the passion the fire, the desire, the physical attraction, the sexual, sexual attraction, and the emotion. And because men are naturally connected with the with the um, five senses of knowledge, the feeling part, that's the emotion part. But it doesn't happen before anything else happens. It's the visual first. Just like anything else. There's an order to things. The way a foundation is built. So it's, you, and you have to have that balance. Because when you're passionate, because think about it, with you all in your um, Dating pool of women that are also visual and she's attracted to your body physically from the beginning before she knows your name. It would be about um because the side is first before you know the name. And in in, in in the relationship starts, your relationship would go into cause you'll start you you two both are visual. The sexual attraction is there before anything is there before you know your names. Okay, and then when the relationship starts to grow, you grow together in feelings. Now, so it's important that Eros, the, the visual sexual attraction, or Ludus, astral, emotion, grow in balance. And I repeat, this isn't for people that, well, my feelings come in after I get to know them. They're not visual. They're not, not in your dating pool. That's why relationships don't work with them. Those of you that are visual, five senses of knowledge, you, and your woman that is visual, because she's naturally, you grow together in emotions. But the first is the physical and sexual attraction, Eros.
and and you need the balance of ludus. I thought it would be philia, but it's the most philia because you the five senses of knowledge is the feelings. To those who experience mania, love is a means of rescuing themselves. Now, and, and, and that balance is very important for men that are visual, and men are visual, especially when they're dealing with their equal, which is a woman that is naturally visual also. Because the, from the beginning, the connection is there through the physical attraction in sight before she knows your name or anything about you. And then when it grows into a relationship, the feelings develop together. So, and when you're getting that much of balance because you're with your equal in the way things are functioning and giving and receiving is you're with your equal. It's not, I had to grow on the person. No, it's when you're with your equal, that importance of the balance because you, you can tip into that obsession, you for her and her for you. Why wouldn't you be become obsessed when you're getting everything you want? And that's from the beginning. You and the person and the person from you. Both of you are. And because men usually don't come across their equal, because that's not a part of their dating pool, it would be they've never had to worry about this type of experience where it's happening because it's with your equal. And you can't just can't get enough of one another because you're growing from the beginning, sight on one another, all through the relationship and feelings develop at the same time. And the sight is first. So it's edels, the passion, desire, the physical attraction, and astral, the emotion. I mean, ludus, in that, that type of balance, that's the emotion. And it could create that obsessive mania. To those who experience mania, love itself is a means of rescuing themselves. A reinforcement of their own value as the sufferer of poor self-esteem. This person wants to love and be loved to find a sense of self-value. Because of this, they can become possessive and jealous lovers, feeling as though they desperately need their partners. If the other partner fails to reciprocate with this same kind of money or love, many issues prevail. This is why money can often lead to issues such as codependency, love catalysts, survival instinct so it's very important because it states it occurs money occurs when there is an imbalance between adults physical passion physical drive desire physical attraction and ludus okay so a lot of men when they get in relationships with people that are women that are not their equal the man has the physical the drive, desire the adults and he, he has the five senses of knowledge, vision, vision the first. And then he is attracted to a woman that is not visual. He can develop a type of obsessive manual love, seeking or chasing someone that is not of his um, dating pool, not of his energetic counterpart and wanting love from her. And it affected his self-esteem. And it's not because there's a balance between Eros and Ludus because you're with the same, your your divine match of both being visual and both being um, instinctually under the under the five sense of knowledge that would be your equal where you two grow together visual sight physical attraction emotions growing relationship growing together balance edels and ludus okay when you are out of your dating pool and you come across some a woman and your visual in the edels energy and she comes in she's not in your dating pool she's not visual it's more about whatever 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 you can start to pursue that relationship you can start to pursue her you take a hit to your self-esteem because you're you're work, walk, working at a cross purpose because you're energetically mismatched and it hits your self-esteem and you start to feel desperately needing the person um it it it, it, it can it can trigger something um, it, it triggers, you become obsessed with the person, obsessed with getting their love, obsessed with tra chasing the person that is incorrect for you. The, the, the obsessed with the, the winning at all costs to get their attention. That's the love catalyst for obsessive love mania, the survival instinct. Keep that in mind, men. When you're in mismatch relationships, that's how it works out. And the chase is on. Not the normal chase that men usually have, but a different type of toxic chase. Because the looters and the edels are not in balance. You're not with the correct person. Where she will be physically attracted to you, you're physically attracted to her. That's before the names are known. That's before you know the personality. And you two grow together emotionally. You two grow together in personality and the relationship develops equally. 
when that doesn't happen, that out of balance is when you're in toxic relations, you're chasing her, she's ignoring you, she wants this, this, and that first. It's usually practical with women, especially with women that aren't visual or practical. I have my moon in Capricorn, but I'm visual, and I have more a lot of water. I have to be sexually attracted to you first. Okay, did to want to know your personality, you know? Or, and I have to be sexually and physically attracted to you before I want to know what your damn job is. I don't care if you own the Fortune 500, the Fortune 500 company. I don't want you if I'm not physically and sexually attracted to you on site. That's visual. A woman that is just practical and not visual, which majority of women are, they have you have to grow on them. They have to grow to love you emotionally. They have to hear what you're offering. And when you get in these imbalanced relations, your adults and the looters, the emotion and the adults, the passion, the desire, the physical attraction is out of balance. And then you go into that needing to win, um, having to have her, having to do this. It's because you're in a damn toxic relationship. Okay. The next one, pragma or enduring love. Eros combined with enduring love is positive. If you can get Eros, Eros is the foundation, the passion, the desire, the physical attraction. Eros, if you get that, philia, ludus combined together, that's very positive. That'll balance out the mania. Because you're with your energetic match. The visual woman, visual man. Now, the relationships are different between people that are matching. Visual people, when they match, the relationship is better. You're with the counterpart. It's an energetic match from the beginning. Pragma or enduring love. Pragma is a love that has aged, matured, and developed over time. It is beyond. It has transcended the casual it is a unique harmony that has formed over time. You can find pragma in married couples who've been together for a long time or in friendships that have endured for decades. Unfortunately, pragma is a type of love that is not easily found. We spend so much time and energy trying to find love and so, so little time in learning how to maintain it. That's why the question is, what type of lover do you see yourself as being? Wait, now. Unlike the other types of love, pragma is the result of effort on both sides. And I will always state throughout my years of doing the old work that I used to do, I would say, feelings don't build relationships is what I just state. Time, energy, and effort dies like that. Because it's like after the feelings, if you're going in order, if you're visual and you're in, a, you're in alignment with the five senses of knowledge, okay, at, at some point you get to the time, energy, effort. But it's you grow to that point together if you're both visual and of the same dating pool. You know? Pragma is the result of effort on both sides. It's the love between people who've learned to make compromises, have demonstrated patience and tolerance to make the relationship work. Now, pragma by itself isn't going to work. Any of these types of love without adults is not a romantic relationship. They can't stand by themselves. And elders can't stay by itself. And a lot of people, they go into relationships that are not visual. And, and elders is there at first. They can't keep their hands off one another. They're having a lot of sex. But they're not visual. So it ends and stops. When you're visual, elders is, is the foundation of the relationship. And these here, one of these, or most of these, these need to be combined with it. Philosia or self love. Philosia? The Greeks understood that in order to care for others, we must first learn to care for ourselves. The form of this form of self love is not the unhealthy vanity of self obsession. This is focused on personal fame. That, that is pers focused on personal fame, gain, and fortunes, as it is in the case of narcissism. Instead, Philosia is self-love in its healthiest form. It shares the Buddhist philosophy of self-compassion, self-compassion, because even with everything visual, visual men and you all's dating pool of visual women, it brings the energy back to you. When you're facing your equal, it brings the energy back to you and it brings the energy back to them. And you're already ready for your equal. 
You've already, you've always been visual. You've always been aligned with the five, the five sense of knowledge. You, the, the, the missing ingredient was you weren't in front of the right person. That's why the mania comes in, and that's the toxic relationship. Because there's an imbalance of the edels in the lure. Because you're with the wrong person from the beginning. Now, it shares the Buddhist philosophy of self-compassion, which is the deep understanding that only once you have the strength to love yourself and feel comfortable in your own skin, you'll be able to provide love to others. As Aristotle put it, all friendly feelings for others are an extension of a man's feelings for himself. When you're in front of a person that is visual, it brings the energy back to you. Now, like a mirror, but not the toxic mirror that mania creates. Toxic relationship. The healthy mirror of being in front of your equal that is understands you, that gets you, that is under the same energetic vibration of the five senses of knowledge like you are. That starts out how you start out. Physical, visual, Five senses growing together to them to getting to know one in there emotionally is after that. Now, so this is where men now with me stop attracting toxic relationships. The men, because you get into your into your dating pool, which is visual. And that creates a different type of relationship because you're in front of a different type of woman. You're in type of a, in front of a mirror, but a high vibrational one. And it brings the energy back to you. You two are functioning together and not out of cross purpose. Not out of cross purpose. It's functioning together in unison. At on site, on point, physically attracted, visual. Physically attracted, visual. Growing from there into the emotional. Growing from there into the practical and building a life. G growing from there because there's an understanding. Harmony. The correct balance of Edos and Lewis. You cannot share what you do not have. If you do not love yourself, you cannot love anyone else either. The only way to truly be happy is to find that unconditional love for yourself. Often learning to love yourself involves embracing all the qualities you perceive to be unlovable. This is where, where the shadow work comes in. Now, where you were doing your shadow work was when you were dealing with people that create that mania. You have to have them. I have to do it because there's that imbalance. You're not with a visual person. They're functioning at a crowd. You don't, two don't function together. And they never will function with you because you're not in your dating pool. You're in your lesson pool. Five senses of knowledge. Vision being first. Sight. Knowing on sight, knowing from sight. And that doesn't mean that every woman that you're physically attracted with is the one. It means that you're in your dating pool. Why? Because you're physically attracted to them. That personality is within that, within that dating pool. And she is, but the personality has to be also visual. She has to be visual too. Okay. That's your dating pool. Now, so let's see. Then that, and this is for. Philosophia, self-love, the love catalyst is the soul. Number eight, agape or selfless love. The highest and most radical type of love, according to the Greeks, is agape or selfless, unconditional love. This type of love is not the sentimental outpouring that often passes its love in our society. Exactly. It has nothing to do with the condition-based type of love that our sex-obsessed cultures try to pass as love. Exactly. Agape is what some, some call spiritual love. It is an unconditional, unconditional love bigger than ourselves, a boundless compassion, and infinite empathy. It is what the Buddhists describe as metta, or universal loving kindness. It is the purest form of love that is free from desires and expectations and loves regardless of the flaws and shortcomings of others. Agape is the love that is felt for that which we intuitively know as the divine truth. The love that accepts, forgives, and believes for our greatest good. 
This love catalyst is the spirit. The self-love, the love catalyst is the soul. The selfless love, selfless love, the love catalyst is the spirit. Now, thanks to the ancient Greeks, we can learn from all the different types of love in our lives. Because of these distinctions, we can learn that in order to truly enjoy eros, it's not about eros shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be sexual attraction or physical attraction. No, eros is the foundation of a long-lasting, high vibrational, divine masculine and divine feminine relationship. Everything is built on eros. Now, let's talk about what eros is again. Remember, we're talking to men that are visual and your divine counterparts are women that are visual. This is what eros is. Now, eros is number one. The first kind of love, eros which is named after the Greek god of love and fertility. Eros represents the idea of sexual passion and desire. Now, so let's go down here and see how they conclude it. Then I'm going to get into what the question is that I want to ask you out here. And it states, Thanks to the ancient Greeks, we can learn from all the different types of love in our lives because of these distinct... That's why, because it's built on Eros, that's why the men, have, the, men, the men can have selfless love. And they go into the energetic vibration of self-love and loving selflessly. Because they're with their divine counterpart and it's built on Eros and she's visual just like you. You know, is what it is. So let's see. And the Greeks, I love the Greek. Obviously, I love the Greek gods and, and the physical and the sexual attraction and the male body and the female body and physical beauty being a direct um, alignment with intelligence, the five senses of knowledge like that, intelligence most definitely. So thanks to the ancient Greeks, we can learn from all the different types of love in our lives. Because of these distinctions, we can learn that in order to truly enjoy, it's about the enjoyment of animals. We must also search for greater depths through failure. That's what I thought, failure, and cultivate ludus. Exactly. I knew it was failure and errors that would be most the, the connection. And that's how ludus is cultivated. Because when, when, when the ludus is imbalanced, that's when, that, that's when the money is created. When the errors and ludus is uh, imbalanced, it's when the money is created. Now, and there has to be a balance with the mania because with this divine connection, because everything from the beginning on site is the, 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 the connection is built, physical attraction, your body, the connection is built there. That's why that money is there. So it has to be balanced with the ludus. Now, let's talk about it. When you're with your toxic partners, and that's what you all have been with, that's why it hasn't worked, they're, and they're not visual, and it becomes toxic, you're chasing them, and, uh, and they're more about the practical, you're chasing them. Okay, it's that type of obsessive love. You, The man becomes obsessive because of a toxic relationship. Now, with your divine counterpart that is visual just like you, that that obsessive love is still there, but it'll be for different reasons, so that Eros has to be balanced still, but there's a different reason for you and her it has to be balanced. Because of what coming together with two energetic vibrations that are in sync means. And what kind of obsession that can create with one another of getting all you want, you from them, them from you. And the growing emotion starts together and all of that. The visual started first and it's together. Then the emotion starting together and then the practice started, and it's all together. The five sense of love. So it could be that balance needs to still be there with you all also. But the balance... Uh, not the toxicity, the balance of too much of a damn good thing can be obsessive too. That type of balance. Now, let's see. Now, we can learn that in order to truly enjoy adults, we must also search for greater depths through failure and cultivate ludus, avoiding mania as our relationship matures. Exactly. And mania being created through because too much of a good thing. When, you're, when you meet your vibrational match, that's something else. And it's the match from the eyesight. It's through these efforts that we'll find pragma in our soulmate relationships. Finally, through the power of Balashia and a gate, Balashia, self love, a gate, selfless love. We can come to understand how amazing our human hearts really are. Our hearts are the only things in the universe that grow larger 
the more they give to others. Exactly. Because these divine kind of parts, visual plus visual, they have this selfless love and have self-love. They have that. Nobody had a self-love because remember I stated with visual and visual, it's the same mirror. It's a mirror and it brings the energy back to you and the person, they're visual and they love you. They were well, attracted to you on sight. The connection is made. And that creates self-love within you that they, within you and within them. It's like mirrors. And then they become selfless with one another. Through the emotions growing and building and developing. They're in sync throughout the relationship. And through the forming of the relationship. It's that. It's not how you've been led to believe. Well, you should be selfish. And it's not about how I look. And it's not about the physical attraction. It's about this. Uh, no, no. They've told you incorrectly. And those are toxic relationships and toxic connections. That's why they don't work. Or they're short-lived. It's the visual first. The five senses of knowledge. And men are naturally connected to them. Now I want to ask you all men this. What is What type of lover do you see yourself as? And we're talking about physical and sexual. What type of lover do you see yourself as? And think about hookup culture for a second. Your angelic karma knows nothing about hookup culture, but she knows that there is a hookup culture. Now, if you're a man, you're going to think about this because it's unique to you and you only know what your experience is being. You don't know what you think about it. Even if you have not had experience, you know what you think about yourself. You know what type of sexual lover you are. You know what you bring to the table. Now, I want to ask you what hookup culture. We're going to talk about hookup culture again in the future, in the near future. Now, and what your type of lover you are physically. Do you, if you're, if you consider yourself a good lover, I'm a great lover. You, you would have to be a great lover if you're connected with the five senses of knowledge, the visual, the, that's the senses, the touch, the taste, the feeling, the sight, the smell. So you would consider yourself a great lover, unique to you, unique to your own characteristics. Now, and, and it's not what sets about women like different things when you're with your match. When you're with your match, somebody's visual like you, there's a different type of energetic in syncness. This shit just flows. It just flows because you're in sync. Now, is so it's not about that. It's about what type of lover you know yourself as being. Now, not how I made love to Sally is as you listen, what type of lover do you think yourself is being taking only yourself into consideration, not the woman because with your match that will also will also be visual. You two will be in sync. It's just going to be a natural in sickness. Your lover, the type of lover you are matches her, what she will want, what she will give, what she will respond to. Okay. She matches what you will want, what you will give, what you will respond to. Now the type of lover that you are, Okay, in hookup culture, does that, what type of need does that feel? Now, especially when, you, when we're talking about edos and standalone energy when you're not with your match. And you're just trying to get an itch scratch. And you're not able to bring all of you to the table, that which what you would bring if you were with your match, which will always also be visual. Now, and physically attracted to you, physically attracted to men. Now, so... If so, how has hookup culture or has hookup culture been a way for you to get an itch scratch in the meantime, but you haven't lost the type of lover that you are? Now, men that are just out there ripping and running with sex, this one and that one and that one and that one, they obviously are not good lovers. It would be because a good lover likes to take his time on a woman. And he likes to be with the woman that wants to his time taken on. And a good lover and a woman likes to take her time with the man. Like, and she wants to be with a man that he wants his time you to take time on it. And both of them are quite visual. Now, and, and they are not trying to scratch an itch. It would be, so has it cramped your style? Or do you look at it as, well, sometimes the itch needs to be scratched and I need a quick fix. Now, and, and, and it does hinder me from 
the great lover that I am and how I would be under different circumstances. But I am aware of that. I go in it fully aware of that. It's not about how many notches I can get in my belt like other men. It's about me being a great lover and knowing that this hookup culture kind of hinders my ability to demonstrate that. Not even demonstrate it. It hinders my ability to be that which I am. Because men that are Men are naturally connected with the five senses of knowledge, and that is all since while. So, is in, in women that are visual are connected with the five senses of knowledge also, and it is all since while. So, sit with that question: What type of lover you are, and, and how hookup culture has served this purpose for you? If you dealt with hookup culture and, and or and but you see the limitation and, and also if you haven't dealt with hookup court culture and you the type of lover that you are and what was your reason for not dibbling and dabbling in that area like that. Okay, everyone, until next time. Thanks for listening. Bye.